Martinez, spell out for us the investment by Future Growth Asset Management of 625 million rand in major housing projects. What's involved here? Sure. So the company we funded is called Cosmopolitan Projects. They're a housing developer um, and they invest in Gauteng. They have a number of developments, you know, in and around the, the Joburg CBD and Tswane as well. And what they do essentially is they build houses for the lower to middle income sector. Um, these are houses averaging in price at about 450,000 rand. Um, and this is really the affordable housing sector. And, I mean, these are, these are households that have a gross income of about 10,500 to 30,000 rand. So really it's, it's people, you know, first-time homeowners starting out in the market and effectively building their wealth and being able to start sooner than, than later. This is something Future Growth Asset Management has done before. You know that this is a good investment, don't you? You've got a bit of history here. Yes, exactly, we do. We've, we've funded Cosmopolitan before, although in that instance, we funded them with the Nurture, the National Urban Reconstruction and Housing Agency, and that was to fund a specific project, um, namely Protea Glen, which, which is close to Soweto. Um, but in this instance, this is really the first opportunity we've had to actually fund Cosmo, you know, for all of their funding needs for for the next eight to ten years. So the 625 million rand will be used to effectively build about 20,000 houses um, for majority first-time homeowners, as I mentioned. And yeah, this is really to to help them along their wealth creation journey, so to speak. So is that the reason for doing it? Is it part of a social impact? Exactly. So we really focus on you know developmental and and efforts that have a very high impact. We have funds that are mandated to do investments, you know, of that kind. However, in our allocation of these deals, we actually, you know, allocate across the across the board to to many of our funds. And so, in the end, the pension fund clients are the ones benefiting. And even though we are looking for, you know, the social returns, we do these at at market-related rates, you know, at risk-adjusted rates, because ultimately, people that benefit that being the pension fund clients at the end, they need to be adequately, um, you know, adequately rewarded, so to speak, for the for the risk that they're taking on in these investments. I can see the social return. What's the financial return? So I mean, we, we do a deep a deep credit due diligence. We look at the financial metrics. We look at the company's operations. In Cosmos' case, they have a very strong marketing arm, and so that also. Um, you know, it, it, it educates where they build and how they build and where they buy the land to build on. So we looked at that process as well, specifically in this instance. Um, we look at management. We want to understand the business intimately and, you know, to be able to, 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 to understand what that level of return that we need to, to um, benchmark the, the asset at. It's an interesting sector to be in because demand for housing in the lower to middle income sector, it outstrips exactly. supply, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, that's very true. So, I mean, urbanization is, is still a real phenomenon. Johannesburg, um, Gauteng particularly, uh, is, is a huge economic hub. And so you see people still moving into those areas. And Cosmo really looks to build in, in sort of within the, the, the CBD kind of areas so that you know, people aren't using too much of their income in terms of transport costs and, you know, where you're saving, and particularly in this economic environment where, where the consumer is under enormous pressure, living close to places of work is, is really ideal. So Cosmo, as I mentioned, would look, you know, through their marketing, where the demand really is, what kind of development would be suitable for that area, and that will inform how and where they build. What specifically does Future Growth's investment fund? It's for their funding needs for the, over the next eight to ten years. And what Cosmo does is it's, it's, it's a full spectrum, basically, of, of services that they provide over, you know, in the housing sector. They will buy the land, they will prepare the land, so get, um, you know, local council approvals, the town planning, um, install, you know, external and internal services, so that sewer pumps, water drains, electrical, they do the road networks and so on. So basically our funding will prepare the land up to the point where Cosmo can actually build a house on it for a consumer. To what extent does Future Growth have oversight of the project? So often we've seen housing developments in the lower and middle income area 
being rather shoddy, falling apart, being substandard. You'd mm -hmm. obviously want to have good quality houses being built in good areas, exactly. done That's properly. Exactly true. I mean, we, we looked at their processes um, in detail, and I think also importantly, Cosmo has been in this space for the past 20 years now. They've, they've delivered about 18,000 houses to the market, um, and going forward, they're looking at doing 2,000 to 2,500 per year. And I think just to add, in their process, you know, they have certain warranties and guarantees for the consumer. So, I mean, things like water pipe leaks, um, electrical problems, and also, importantly, Cosmo is part of um, the National Home Builders Registration Council, the, the NHBRC, and as part of their membership there, they provide a five-year warranty on certain aspects of, of the build. So, you know, those, those controls are in place, and we, we take comfort from that as well. Um, and, I mean, to date, we, we haven't, to our knowledge, actually heard of a major, um, you know, uptick. We're talking about houses here. What about other amenities, schools, shopping centers, for example, mm -hmm. within those communities? In, in the development, I'll make an example of Water Fast Break, which is a new development that Cosmo is um, going to undertake as part of the funding. They've set aside, um, you know, a certain number of stands for a development of a school. They've set aside stands for a retail sort of hub. Um, and they have community development sort of areas. So it's, it's, it's really integrated living. They, they try and build communities where, you know, people are, are living there, they enjoy living there, and it's, it's close to places of work. They have schools in, in the near vicinity. Um, Waterfall, for example, has a number of schools within a five-kilometer radius. They have, you know, churches, police stations. So, so really to make living there as, as pleasant as possible <laughs> and to have, you know, these, these things close to, to the consumer. Are you not concerned about house price inflation underperforming? I'm looking at a quote here from Andrew Golding, the chief executive of the Pam Golding Property Group, and he says mm -hmm. uh, he talks about house, house price inflation in Gauteng has underperformed the, the national index in recent years because of the mm -hmm. subdued economic environment. What are your thoughts there? Sure, yeah, I mean, that is a concern. Um, and I think going back to, to the, what you said about the quality of these houses, that in itself, because ultimately the security here for our investment is the house itself. So, you know, Cosmo building quality houses, I think that, that helps to alleviate some of that risk. Um, we, we also, if you think about the fact that there is a huge backlog, so, you know, in Gauteng particularly, um, you, you hear facts of, you know, the, the backlog is about 850,000 units. So the, the backlog really is, is, you know, part and parcel of driving the market in the Gauteng province. So I think, yes, it's a risk, but, um, yeah, I think for the years to come, the, the market will still be growing at quite a good pace. Are you targeting specifically areas around Gauteng because that's the economic hub? Yes. So, and that's also, you know, partly due to Cosmopolitan's target being in those areas. Um, they have developments in, in Joburg. I mean, a number of them, uh, there's Protect Lane, which is close to Soweto. There's one more park in the east of Johannesburg. And then they also have some developments in Tuane as well. And additionally to these houses, they, you know, they have an, an arm in the group that does rental housing, for instance. They have um, a retirement village also are at investments. So it's, it's really a, it's an integrated, you know, um, business with investments over a whole spectrum of, of, of housing assets. It seems to me to be a, a, quite a worthy form of investment, and I mean that in the best possible sense. There's a return, obviously, for mm -hmm. you, but at the same time, you're stimulating economic growth. You're assisting the middle, lower to middle income group. It exactly. seems to be a win-win on all levels. Yeah, it, it really is. And I think through our other investments as well, you know, we, we find, for example, mortgage, mortgage lenders, we, we're looking at, you know, looking at the, the low to middle income class and effectively elevating and creating wealth in that sector. I mean, these are people who probably wouldn't have been able to afford, to afford houses as soon as they can, you know. But the interventions that these companies are, are making in trying to to uh, supply housing to these these people is it's, it's really great, and it's, it's wealth creation, it's it's social upliftment. You know, it's 
it's, it's what this country needs, really. It's giving people upward mobility because once exactly. they're, they're the first time homeowners, ultimately they're able to use that and trade up in the property market. True. And the key is it's giving it to them sooner than they would have been able to, to get to that point before. How do you see the longevity of this type of investment? So we previously funded them, as I mentioned, for Proto Glen and Florito. Um, and, I mean, that they fully repaid that investment. This 625 million rand loan now is for a five-year term. Um, but, I mean, after that term, we, we are open to negotiations and so on. But for at least the next five years, we are going to be involved with Cosmo. And it's a good business, and we, we haven't had any issues today.